Yeah, maybe Jersey guys are tougher than the rest. I also met Eddie at the Choo Choo Club. My band was one of those he sat in with and embarrassed us, Sam. I was 16 and I had a phony cabaret license and I was working all over New York City, sitting in with Lionel Hampton and playing in Greenwich Village with Jimi Hendrix when he was still Jimmy James with a pompadour. And I used to stand in front of the Metropole Cafe and watch all those great drummers, Sonny Payne and Gene Cooper and Buddy Rich, stealing every lick I could. And one day the Metropole started playing rock and roll in the afternoons, and I got to play there. It was really quite awesome. One day I was a kid outside looking in, and the next day I was up on that stage. Now the owners, they really loved me right away. They liked my style. They thought I had a really bright future, if I could stay out of trouble. They kind of watched over me and even gave me a place to stay upstairs in one of the empty dressing rooms. So one day my friend Ruby comes in. Felix, you tell me. Okay, but I gotta back up a little bit first. I found out real quick all these Jersey guys had one thing in common. They were all crazy. <laughs> Come over for coffee one of these days and I'll tell you stories you will not believe. So like I was saying, I go to Europe with Joey D. And who are we opening for? Some group called the Beatles. Wait a minute, excuse me folks, but I must interrupt. Felix is being a little too humble here. October 26th, 1963, Stockholm, Sweden, the Beatles open for them. I swear to God. And to tell you the truth, we didn't think that much of these English guys trying to do our American music. What did they do? Later, when they started writing their own songs, well, then we got it. Anyway, I get back home, I start a little group that becomes the house band at Joey Starlight Club. Not exactly the Peppermint Lounge, by the way. And I thought we were pretty good. But my future ex, Ruby, straightened me right out. <laughs> what, you think you guys are good? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, I know a drummer that's a lot better than yours. <laughs> what do you know? You work at a bank. Oh, really, college boy? Follow me. Ah, okay, okay, all right, all right. So she drags me into the Metropole Cafe. There is Dino Donnelli, who within 60 seconds of the first song completely blows my mind. The sticks are flying all over the place while he's laying down a groove like you can't believe. So I say to Ruby, you know any guitar players?
So Felix and I had a really good conversation at the Metropole. And it turns out that we love all the same music. Ray Charles, Miles Davis, all the stuff that's coming from Motown. Now we don't really get a chance to play together until a singer comes to town named Sandra Scott. And she's on her way to Vegas. She's looking for a keyboard player and a drummer. Sandra was kind of a lounge act, but she did a lot of Broadway show tunes, but with a very interesting twist. So Felix and I, we sign on, we go to Vegas. As Sandra Scott and her Scotties. And if you didn't already guess, we're wearing kilts and spoons. The whole Scottish nine. It was truly embarrassing. Especially for a couple of young paisans. But the good thing was when she made costume changes, Felix and I got a chance to play a song together. And what a trip it was. The first time I got to hear him sing. You know that I love you, tell the world I do. Come on, pretty baby, why can't you be true? And your love needed oh so bad. You're the best woman that I ever had. I put down. We were a weird combination that just clicked. On paper, it shouldn't have worked as well as it did. Felix is soul music, and he's doo -wop. And Dino's New Orleans second line in big band jazz. And then there was me, the white, white guy. <laughs> Rockabilly was my thing. Carl Perkins, Scotty Moore with Elvis, Cliff Gallup with Gene Vincent, Dwayne Eddy, and James Burton with Ricky Nelson. That's a James Burton like I used on Good Lovin'. You know, Bruce Springsteen told me that's why he bought the record. in Puerto Rico. Don't ask. We came back and got a gig at the famous Peppermint Lounge. Then all my guys split and went home. But I ain't leaving. I stayed. 
And what do you know? <laughs> Joey D decides to put his band back together and ask me to join. We catch Felix just back from Vegas and he rejoins. And he replaces his brother David. And now we've got three quarters of the Rascals. He's got the right guys for the band. And that's how we wind up in Felix's father's basement. Remember that day, Eddie? Yeah. Would you believe we learned 26 songs the first day? And the local kids could hear it through the basement windows. So we were killing them right away in the neighborhood. And then it came full circle for me. Our first residency is at my home away from home, the Choo Choo Club. And by the way, not for nothing, but the Choo Choo Club was called the Choo Choo Club for a reason. Can you guess why? You can set your watch by it. But who could afford a watch? Thank <laughs> you. 